Good evening. I'm Father Russ, and wow, my God, that gold is heavy. <laughs> and uh, this is Street Talk. Uh, and thank you for allowing me into your home. Uh, you know, we've had a great uh, season of guests. We're, we're working towards the holiday season. It looks like we're going to have a nice year coming up, a lot of, a lot of great people. I've got a great guest tonight. I'll probably yell at him a little bit, but uh, okay. Before before I get to him, though, I want to say I, I want to say hello to Peter and George down at G's. Okay, love you guys. Thank you. And Peter, stop beeping the horn when you go by my house in the morning playing golf. And uh, Mr. Bassetto, see, I remember, remember that you watched me all the time, and you thought I didn't remember the last time we were together. And I saw you down at G's. Okay, so we love you. Okay, and then I need to say hello to Bobby, Jennifer, and Darren, who I know are watching the show at, at home. And thank you, Jennifer, for uh, holding down the fort tonight so I could get out and run around with my co host that's across the table, Dominic Cotton, who's here with me, and my favorite guest. And uh, I maybe I should go to the restaurant, <laughs> right? Who, who hit out in California? <laughs> Miss my show was out in California, but we forgive him. And my senator, Paul Pamika. Good. How are you? We, we hey, forgive him because we really like your aide, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> She's a nice lady. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She, she covers up a lot of sins for me. He's a wonderful person. Well, you know what? Yeah, yeah. You, 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 well, you've got nice people to work for you and stuff like that. You really got a, uh, you know, you, you, you've got a, you've got a good crew. And all you do, you know, it's the businessman in you, I guess it is, that, that runs well. Uh, you know, I moved over to Waterford. I'm sorry, I know everybody in New London is I'm a trader now, but uh, and I was with Dean uh, Stewart. Uh, and, uh, friend of yours, a, a yes. long time friend of yours. I was with Dan. I have to say, this Democrat, I voted Republican. I'm sorry, folks. I, I've known Dan a long time and a great man, and I, you know, I, I crossed over party lines because I do vote for the, you know, I vote for the person. You know. And that's, you know, and that's what you do, especially in a small town, a small community, you vote for the yeah, you got you got to look at who's capable and who's going to. Uh, and I'm not going to say whether I voted for you or not because my no. democratic my democratic people would throw rocks at me. You know, no. <laughs> you told but, me the time the first time I was on you weren't going to vote for me. You told me that. <laughs> I told you that, but who knows, right? <laughs> Only me and my conscience in the booth. Uh, okay, uh, but uh, real how? I guess what I really want to know is. How you finding stuff up at the state house, uh, and and how's it going? Well, listen, I think it's going great uh, in, in the sense of being able to serve in this capacity. I mean, it's such an honor and a thrill uh, to be the state senator from the 20th district uh, and to go up there and you know after 24 years as a public servant, elected official in East Lyme, and you know 30 years plus in business. Um, you know, to have this opportunity, one, I tell everybody go up there because take the tour. The League of Women Voters has a great tour. You see all the history, the tradition, the capital, the yeah, LOD. Quite a, yeah. You know, uh, but that aside, you know, you're, you're there and we're there to do the job. And one of the things um, that I am in both business, as you mentioned, and uh, in my time as first selecting in East Lyme, is I'm a process guy. You know, you got to have a good process so you have a good product. Right. Simple, right, right, right? right, right. So the process up there needs a lot of fixing. And uh, so I was up there. I'm excited to be a part of it. The first year, January to June, is the long session. Mm -hmm. The second year is a shorter session. It starts in February, goes to May. Um, so we have all the committee work the first three months or so. And I'm on three committees. I'm on appropriations, which is the expenditure side of the budget, uh, public safety, uh, and energy. So, um, yeah, I like, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. We got we got a friend on here, Paul. We use the. Uh, good evening. You're on Street Talk. I know Ray. That must be you. I'm on Hi, here with Ray. our senator, Paul Paul Famica, and Dominic. Okay. Okay. Yes, uh, Father. 
uh, Senator Paul Famica. Don't you know Paul? Hi, Paul. You, I know you Ray. know him. Ray. Ray. Hi, Ray. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing? He used to have a show. Do you still have the show? No, well, the show went with the first selectman. Okay, so, okay, so right. So we passed it over. You right, passed Mike? it over. Right. So you, you've you seen him on here, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. How are you, Paul? He's saying, how you doing? I'm doing hey, great. I couldn't be better. How about you, sir? Hey, Paul. How you doing? He, Good. We're, you know, we're we're up there trying to get things, yeah, get things nice man. Pop people about. together. Right. You got a question, Ray? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, we're talking about what's going on in the state. Representation and all that stuff. Oh, I see. Okay? I, I'll look to you. Oh, okay. Love you, Kai. Have a good night. All right, Ray. Take care, Ray. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for calling. Ray is a loyal fan of everybody. He follows every... Well, he's followed us for, God, 12 years, something like that. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, I hope he's doing well. Yeah. But uh, he, he's the local New London guy and stuff like that. He's well, glad he called. And Benny, I, I, I bet you more than once he's probably called your yeah. your, your old show, yeah. right? Yeah. But, but yeah, we were saying about. So we're this. we're on committees. The uh, committee work is in the beginning, and right. and one of the things that you know happened this year that I think was a bit unusual is there are 36 members of the state senate. Mm -hmm. Well, this year there were eight new members. Now, I was yeah, the only right, right. I was the only one that changed parties, but you know there are eight new people. That's a big turnover yeah, for a small group like that. So group. there was a lot of interest in people getting together and talking. I hate to say across party lines because once you get elected and sit there, it shouldn't be about party lines. It should be about people and process. Yeah. Um, so there was a lot of good conversation, uh, and as it moved forward, it kind of morphed more and more into uh, a political. Um, dialogue in, in terms of, you know, uh, we, you, you heard all about the fact the Republicans were shut out of the room, we put a budget yeah, forward, yeah, it was poo poo, you know, and listen, we, we don't have all the answers in the world, but you got to have dialogue with people if you want to have solutions. And so that's my biggest thing. I'm trying to get to know as many people as I can. I'm trying to get to know as many people as I can here in district so that I can understand issues and then have this, conversations. This is the one thing that we've done uh, on the show, okay? And I have to give credit to uh, Dominic across the table from well, me. Well, Paul, Paul saw it last time uh, I went up to go testify. Uh, right, right, right. He's like, how many Republicans does this guy really need? <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but the fact of the matter is, okay, on the show, right, we wanted to cross over the aisle. Most people know that I'm a serious left-wing, far-left, Democrat crazy person, okay, on this show. So a lot of people, I think, were afraid to come on the show over the years. The you, you know the other side. Dominic has, uh, you, you, you know, a tone that uh, allows. They for warned me about you before I came <laughs> on. And I came on anyway, just so you That's know. That's right. <laughs> I remember. Right, right, and, and and but but of course, over the course of a year and a half, we you know we made a lot of Republican friends. I didn't get out there and say the only two uh, governors that hired me to work for them were both Republican, yeah. Frank Seitch in, in, uh, in Massachusetts that I worked for uh, for four years, and uh, uh, Governor Symington in uh, Arizona. I was uh, on the civil rights uh, thing for three, three, three years. <laughs> both, so both, both Republican, okay, that weren't afraid of saying, Hey, let's crazy Russ let, let, as far left as he is. Let's let's bring him on. I, I, Democrats are, uh, are afraid of me. I think more than uh, more than Republicans. Once I get down and we, we talk, I, I think we're well, closer. We, we, we find common we, ground. We find common ground. I mean, and that's always what uh, I'm a, I'm about. But the problem is, I, I'm always dealing with justice stuff. Justice stuff is very emotional, yeah. very heavy. You know, the death penalty. So you're always in a battle. You know, uh, and the disability stuff is, uh, well, it's not quite the same. I think the disability, more when we did, did dis disability, uh, you can cross party lines easier because everybody, a lot of people really understand, you, you, you know, the tragedies that can happen with disability. So, but over the course of time, we've developed a lot of very good friends on, on the other side. And that's what has to happen. Well, you know, I tell you, you, you the story. You need to be able to talk. 
You know, when I was first elected as first selectman, it was 2007. I installed December of 2007, so it's really 2008. And as we begin to put the budget together, which is the first order of business uh, that you have to handle, uh, once you get to know people, you starting. I started to see this fiscal event coming, you know, which was to change the world, right? The Great Recession <laughs> yeah, uh, right, was right. on the horizon, and right, I said to right. my guys, you know, I got to go talk to the Democratic Town Committee. And, you know, we need some help. And they all said, you're crazy. Don't go. You know, similar to what they told me to come yeah, on your yeah, show. Yeah, you know, yeah, right, right. You're no. crazy. Um, yeah. They said, you can't go there. They'll take advantage of it. And I said, disagree. These are 40 committed, passionate people who have the best interests of the community at heart. At the end of the day, what do you, what do you really disagree on? I mean, yeah, right. you know, everybody wants safe schools and good roads and, uh, and make sure that our future looks bright, right? So and good tax things. So I went and spoke to them. And I said, these are the problems that I see. This is what I'm faced with. This is the budget crisis, what I think. At the time, we had all our pension money uh, for the unions and everybody else in, uh, uh, in the Hartford. Hartford was wobbling a little bit, getting some aid. And out of that meeting, you know, Paul McDonough, who was the assistant banking uh, commissioner for, I, I forget under who, uh, longtime Democrat, came and volunteered for the pension committee. And, you know, we've... We've doubled our pension holdings over the last five or six years as a result of bringing in expert Well, well I, I mean, uh, the area, uh, okay, your area and, and, and where you are, I, I mean, when you were running for office, people didn't want you to lose your, your mm. seat. I yeah. mean, I yeah. mean, you're also, be, because anybody can go to you. When you govern, you govern. It doesn't matter. You're not looking at party lines. You get a problem, you you deal with the problem. Yeah. I, I mean, and, and and that's the rea That's how government's supposed to work. To serve. To serve. Yeah. And the problem. I, I I don't know. I don't. I don't know what's happening. It's really funny because I'm. I, I just got Carl Rose. We both Carl Rose. Of all people, <laughs> he's a brilliant, brilliant man. There's no question about it. But I got his new book, uh, McKinley. And, and, and I haven't gotten into it much, about a chapter or two and stuff like that. And they talk about the, the, the old Republicans, the concern how the old Republicans were, which, which were a lot of concern about my kind of folks and a poor, marginalized development of workers and unions and everything else like that. And, 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 and the way the Republican Party was. I don't know what the hell has happened with the crazy people that are in Washington. I, I'm with you. I, and it's not all Republicans. I mean, we got crazy de Democrats up there, too. I really don't know what, what's happened, where, where these people come from. Uh, 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 no no compromise, although, although I have to say, latest uh, with, well, what's his name, that just moved in uh, to the chairmanship Paul, uh, Paul Ryan. Ryan, yeah. Yeah. okay, got the big road bill passed, finally, for crying out loud. Infrastructure, five-year thing. I mean, that should have been passed several years ago, you know? And, and he's got this got big he's, stuff he's, coming he's down. A, he's a monetary guy, and he, wa he wanted to be on um, uh, the, 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 the tax committees that really were going to change the, 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 the tax code. So he's got a good understanding of of the budget and the budget process that's that's going on within here. I well, mean, is what, what I was hearing what he was saying is, he's hearing what the people want. Get the work mm -hmm. done. Nobody cares about your party line and stuff. Get the mm -hmm. work done. Everybody in the country wants wants people to get the work done. Just to fix it. You, you, you know, work together. This craziness about. You, you know, I, I can't move and, and I, I can't compromise. I, I think people are so tired of it. We, uh, I, we, I know, we, we, have it, uh, yeah, we have it here. I mean, being, how do you put people out of the budget talk when you, 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 know, you know, that, that? It doesn't work. It doesn't you know, work. It clearly doesn't work. And, and I use the example that there's 58% of the majority party, 42% of the minority. So. If you're building anything, this table or this room or whatever, if you leave 42% of the raw material out, you're not going to have as good a product as you are mm -hmm. if you have it all in together. All together. And, right. and, and so we have good leadership, Senator Fasano and uh, oh, Representative yeah, the Claritus, are, they're good common sense leaders. They're, they're not going to go in there and say it's my way or the highway. They're going to say these are the numbers. Based on yeah. these numbers, we think this is a potential solution. We have a lot of those solutions on the table. And I think they're 
there may have been some curiosity and concern by some of the other side about what would happen when we came in the room. But, you know, the governor decided to open the door mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Um, and, and from my perspective, that door's got to stay open. It's got to stay this, open. This can't be oh, well, just this one he's, time. Maybe he's finally listening because a lot of his people, he done it. Uh, okay, he didn't win by no big margins again. Uh, and I said, and I said it on the TV show, if they didn't have Foley, I would have voted for uh, John McKinney. McKinney. Yeah. If they had picked McKinney, okay, because of what the father did. I mean, the father, big time one for our disability stuff and my justice stuff and everything, huge on that. He would have lost all our justice people and our uh, disability people. And Dan, you better understand that because, you know, cutting the hospitals and stuff like that, you know, people are really upset, you, you, you know, with a lot, a lot of the stuff was going on. And, and uh, I think maybe he's hearing he needs I help. Think, I think he did. He needs hear. help. I think he did hear. Plus, there's some disagreement amongst the, you know, the speaker and the, and, the, and, the, and the Senate president about, you know, how do we move forward? But, you know, the, they put the budget into, into effect July 1, again, Without any input from any of us, I think every Republican voted no, and a number of Democrats voted no. Um, and so they put it forward, and then here you go, uh, from July 1 to August 31st, it's 100 million out of balance, and you have 103 million of rescissions, 65 of which target Medicaid and hospitals, which are multiplied by two as a match from the federal government. So that 65 million turned into 192. So if you're going to cut 65 million, you don't want to you know, have that multiplier effect with it, too. So Huge. that whole thing, uh, you know, is a very difficult pill to swallow. Well, well some, of, some, of, some of the budgetary issues are, are there's built-in problems. I mean, you got pensions. Yeah. You, you've got, you know, pensions that have been funded for people that have been in for a long period of time. They've made some changes over time. Um, but there's things that are, are stuck in the budget which can't you know some things can be changed and some things can be looked at to take take away uh, but there's some things that are, are are built in from past administrations well, they're, fixed, they're fixed expenditures it's, yeah exactly. that's right and so you know when i was in east lyme and I, I hate to use that all the time but it was the example i have of managing a budget yeah, of, well. of size and i went in there we had the same situation it was a um, three failed referendums in the budget before I came in. That's why I got elected. They thought I knew what I was doing because I was in business. Or maybe because I fed everybody, they you thought you I knew what everybody. I was doing. <laughs> Good but, food. But, you know, it was that Jesus thing. <laughs> Fishes and loaves, you know. <laughs> I was hoping to figure that out. How do you make the fish? <laughs> We right. figured we'd give you five. You, you could turn it into 5,000. 5, <laughs> right, 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 right. Right. You know, it, so what, what I decided to do is if we could stop that rush to spending, Right. from every department that the last two months of the year, that if I don't spend it, I don't get it, right? right? And that happens in every government, every military organization, every oh, big yeah. business, every, right? And so we targeted and said, you know, you guys, you'll get, how much do you need? You can have the same money you started with next year, but I just want you to do me a favor. Don't spend one and a half percent. Just take one and a half percent, don't spend. Now, can you imagine in a 20 billion, 40 billion dollar two year budget, one and a half percent, you know it's there. You know it's spilling over the edges. Mm -hmm. So if you can just say, we're not punishing you, but just give it back. Mm -hmm. you know? it's, it's and it, it empowers people to really manage their, their, yeah. their agency. And it also, at the end of the day, we were returning five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars a year on a $16 million budget mm -hmm. because people would return 5%. It's, it's, a, it's a similar thing that happens in not-for-profits, and I, I know because I've run a large one I was before. just going to say. You're, you're and we right, get to the end of right. the year, and it would be the time that you would say, okay, well, I got this much left in, in this account. Can I transfer it over to here to, yeah. you know, purchase vehicles? Can, I, can we shift this to over here to do this? And the fear was, if you don't spend it, you're not getting it back next yeah. year. Yeah. Because they'll say, well, you can do without this. Yeah. And it might not be the same set of circumstances the following year. And, you know, we came in, we were invited into the room, and we said, listen, we're, we'll go in under the conditions that we are going to decide on how much the deficit is. There was conflicting, uh, you mm -hmm. know, uh, numbers in the right. room. And right. that was the first meeting, and it took a week or so for a nonpartisan group, the Office of Fiscal Analysis, in conjunction with all the people at the meeting to determine that, yes, $370 million was the number because 
You need a number to shoot mm -hmm. at, you need right? A, yeah, right, so, right, yeah, so right. So we're going to do your, that. Right, exactly. And, and then the, the next thing is we have to look at 2016 because we can't just go from now to June 30th and pretend right. it the rest exist. of it doesn't happen. Right, mm -hmm. right. And we have to go to your issue, which was structural change. Mm -hmm. And how do, we, how do we achieve structural change in terms of pension, um, you know, renovation, if you will, um, in, in the way things are done, how do we do the work week, how do we do benefits, how do we do, and, and not that employees need to be the ones that bear the burden, but we have to kind of get it back into line, and I think everybody needs to bear the burden, and that's Well, there's some things, things that we know that should be in line, and, and no, there's, there's things that they don't want to talk about. There's things that, uh, that happen over a certain period of time. When you start to get people who are on retirement making more money than they ever did while they were working, you've got problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you've got a system that you can, the problem is, you, you, you know, you've got a system where you can work it so that uh, you're boosting your original income to a level that is, I mean, you're basically you're stealing as far as I'm yeah, concerned. Yeah, the three years, you're, you're right? You work, mm -hmm. you yeah, work yeah. like crazy oh, the yeah, last yeah, three yeah, years yeah, and yeah, all yeah, of a yeah, sudden. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah you work, yeah, you get, you, you're making more than you ever made while you were working. Yeah. And, and that's not fair to the taxpayer or anybody else. And the way you did it was not fair to begin with. I mean, and so, and we all know the game. And, and, but nobody wants to go after and say, wait a minute, we got to, we we got to stop this. We got to cap this, and 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 the problem is you're stealing, you're stealing from your kids, is what yeah. you're doing. You, you know you're stealing from down the road. You, you're stealing from everybody else that needs to that needs stuff, and and and, uh, and that's what it is. It's theft, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And my brother might argue with me because he's a sheriff. So. <laughs> God bless him. We don't want to argue with Sheriff. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, you, you can argue. Not me, his family. You can get away with that. I, 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 we can't argue with his family. Yeah, right. It depends on what day it is. Yeah. Uh, but, but uh, you, you know, and there's all these gimmicky things that, 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 that are expenditures that should, just, shouldn't, just shouldn't be there. But you got to look. You, yeah, yeah, exactly. you, you got to look and you, see what what works and what's not working. And, and what's not working, yeah. yeah. And get rid of what's not working. Yeah. Nobody wants to get rid of anything. Once it starts, you, 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 nobody wants to get rid of it. You know, it's like the homeless problem uh, and the prison problem. You, you know, if you had a button, to, you, know, um, uh, you know, that you could shut down the prison. If you were the president, you're not going to shut it down. You got workers, people are making money. You, you, you know, you're going to be making work. It's like the homeless thing. If you build an agency to bring, you, you need homeless people to get paid, okay? Our, our idea, and it's part of why I got out of certain situations, I, I'm not about building an agency when it comes to homeless. I'm about giving people a home. Give them a home, take care of the problem, and stuff like that. Never Move mind on. this agency. Yeah, okay. well, yeah, I'm building an agency for what? For my friends coming out so that they can go to work? They don't even know what they're doing in the business. And, and that's really the problem. We, we've known that from, since BU and from the 70s. Utah put that type of thing in effect, and they've almost got rid of all their homelessness. 80% in the last nine years, they, they basically what? They give them a home, okay? And then they pump in the services and stuff like that. And, and if you do that, it works because of the cost factors of individuals in the street. I mean, what it costs to have somebody in the street, in the shelter and everything else is astronomical sure. compared to, you could actually put them in an apartment or a house and everything else and pump those services for half of what it costs you you probably pay for it just in emergency room, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Just yeah, in emergency, Medicaid, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. just the yeah. picking up off the damn yeah. street yeah. by the fire department or the police or all the intervention. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, and, and those are smart moves. They're common sense moves, and we don't. Yeah, we, we don't. Yeah, we, we live. We live within a, uh, a bureaucracy in in certain agencies in the government, and I think you saw that when uh, we we were up there. Uh, yeah. testifying yeah. against Department of Social Services, yeah. you know, because they wanted to uh, change programs. I'm going to be back there again on the 17th. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but, you know, they look at this stuff and they look at it on paper and they don't go talk to the people that are actually in the trenches. They don't. Yeah, and yeah. and uh -huh. even if you, even when you give them 
the, the answers. It's, if it's not part of their plan that they have, and they're not like short-term plans. They, they, they put these things in, you know, when administrations come in and they have a long-term, uh, what they have is a, a vision of what they want to change. Um, and I think they think that it's going to happen automatically or, or they do it in such a way that, it, that there's a certain level of silence because people don't really understand what's going on until after the fact. Well, it goes to, you know, to Russ's point. It's the agency's yeah. survival first, and, first. Then, and yeah. then the patients or the, or the benefactors second. Second, and, and exactly right. And uh, uh, okay? I, I mean, when you're an administrator, and, you know, and I use the homeless thing as a prime example, they basically built an agency here. You know, we had four or five hundred people who were in the street when we did the count. We started getting rid of them, putting them in apartments and stuff like that. They built an agency. Guess what? The, it increased. Of course it increased. You need them. Because if you don't have homeless coming in, you ain't getting paid. You, think? you, don't, you don't need the staff. You don't need all this stuff. You don't need the building. Uh, okay? Which you should have never bought in the first place. Okay? Because you should have been, if you were buying anything, it should have been an apartment for these people. Get them off the street. Get them services in their home. And stuff like that. That would have reduced the population. Instead, you build, you got an agency, and once you got an agency, you got to pay for that beast. That beast eats up the money, and that money that's got to come, you got to get it someplace. You got to, you got to push for it and everything else. Well, you know, we're going to have it. We're yep. going to have it in the uh, social services. That Paul's going to be at that hearing. Yep. Yeah. You, okay. With justice, the same thing with the prison. We're going to empty out the prison, nurse, to what? You mm -hmm. haven't built the infrastructure on the street to take care of them. Well, you know, I went to a, a observe a process at York uh, where they brought in and yeah. talked about people, what happens when they get out and they come right back. And why do they come right back? And most of it was, you know, you get out and the support's not there. The no job, no home, no nothing. And, oh, and I had Simple. I had Commissioner Simple was on. Yeah, yeah. I think he's good. He's I like him. He's a great like guy. I love he's the good. guy. Yeah. Very good. Guy is Very aggressive, good. knows yeah. what he's doing and stuff like that. And I understand his, the two-tier system he's dealing with, which I'm, I'm somewhat happy with. Uh, I'm somewhat happy with. I'm concerned with older prisoners and stuff like that. And he knows the vision, and he knows, and he knows you're right. He went over to Germany. They went over to Germany, and the Germans said, you know, what are you doing here, basically? They didn't say it that way. I said, you know, what we implemented is everything we learned from the 70s from your people back there. They, Germany uh, and all of the, they implemented everything we did in the 70s. In the 70s, we were reducing all the stuff. Most of the programs were, were planned by convicts, ex-convicts, and stuff like that. They started, they started emptying out the prison, and then what's his name went crazy on the wall with drugs? And reverse the whole thing and fill the place, fill the place up. Now, now we're going to turn it around. But if you, you know, if if I haven't got a job, and if I got no home, and I just come out of the joint, and you threw you, you threw me in the homeless shelter. I'm going to get a rock and a sock. I'm going to hit a cop over the head. I'm going to steal his gun, and I'm going to the other restaurant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to. Run. Yeah. What else am uh, I yeah, going to do? Go back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to probably go back, which is true. Which is true. I, I mean, it's so. It's only common sense. If you okay, you got them. You know, you got them for so many years. You should be training. Okay, you should be training them, and then release them to a program that is watchful, so that they can get back on the feet and not return. And accountable. They, and account yeah, you gotta, accountable. Be, you gotta be responsible. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, you're on Street Talk with Father and his guests. Hi, I'm gonna ask the Senator something. Very good. Is he gonna run for governor? <laughs> you're gonna run for governor. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I have to uh, I have to win the next time first as senator I think. Well, if he does, I he got my vote. Oh, okay. 
Okay, well, thank you very much. I can't commit okay, yet. I just <laughs> to you know, you can come out early. You can be the first one, the that's, first TV host the first to come out. The first host that comes out for ball, you know. I, 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 I honest to God, I, and you know, you know we, we, I, I would I would have, and I told Jack, right, right, right I, I would have I would have voted for him. I was so angry at Dean Malloy, and, you, you know, and, and, and uh, you know, of course, I don't know if he talks to me lately, but he allowed the commissioner on my show uh, or anything else like that. But he really, really upsetting. It was he was really upsetting, upsetting with the com his commitments and stuff like that. I mean, uh, you know, not, and I guess everybody's afraid to tell him. You know, you 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 better straighten out. I mean, you, you know, you, you know, you better get an appointment with Hillary if she wins because I don't I don't think you're going to get it. I don't think he's going to run again. I, I, that's I, that's my honest yeah. thought process. Yeah, I, I think it's still whether, a long way yeah. away, but it's it would still seem... a long way. Yeah, but that we travel down that road that long way pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, the older you get, it seems the faster, faster that time goes. Yeah. Yeah. I know yeah. it. You know, yeah. I love Nancy. There's no question about it. I love Lieutenant yeah. Governor Nancy. I mean, she's all on our issues. That's why she's she's the queen on 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 my issues on justice, on disabilities, and stuff like that. As as was Senator Fasano. Yeah. Oh, I was just. You gonna know what? He, right he, he, yeah. he has he has the leadership and the vision to see that you know. These are the issues that we have to deal with in, in our urban communities, and, you know, we need to address this. And he went straight forward into it. I mean, I've met with him several times. I go to his constituent meetings uh -huh. all the Good. time. Uh, but he's right on well, target with it. Well, yeah. the, the Republicans, God bless you guys uh, and women, okay, have been solid on, on my justice issues this year. You know, I'll come out with this, this, this stuff, you, you know, on... on on our issues, my, my issues, uh, I mean, you know, I'm I'm really I'm I'm really pleased, you know, uh, and I hopefully it's well, that's second what, chance was I don't I won't argue with where you might have been on those things. But. Well, you know, I, I had some problems with the amount of of, of allowable possession of of, of the drugs in, in yeah, second chance. Yeah. I thought it was too much. You know, I, I you know I, I'm not. In favor of loading the prisons up with guys that with the rehab and and uh, you know a good twelve step program you can get out and make uh, you know productive people in in society that's one thing but when you start allowing an ounce of uh, heroin to be a, a misdemeanor I think that that puts us in a little bit of trouble and you know no yes I'm not sure I'm not a I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a drug guy I, well what I think about drugs is prisons the wrong place I agree with that for treatment okay I, I, I mean I, it's like I I deserve going to prison I robbed stole and I was a thief and you, you know and whatever I, I, I'm criminal these drug guys I don't just I don't see them as criminal I see them screwed up with medical stuff. I, I see mental health people in there. Yeah, you know, the ones that rob, they, they don't even know how to rob. They're not thieves. Yeah. I mean, well, what, they're what, opportunity, you know, they do? They, we to empty, get it. We emptied Norwich Hospital and what did yeah, we and they, Yeah, right? we put them Because in we didn't have a facility to take the mental health portion of it. And right. we can't be cutting mental health. We can't be doing it and saying, you know, we, we need to fix the gun problem. We need to fix the drug problem. We need to, but yet we have no opportunity for rehabilitation or some kind well, of... Well, I think, I think part of the problem that they had is the one that Russ is talking about with the homeless, is they emptied out the hospitals right. around the state. No and infrastructure. And they, and they had no infrastructure no of, where, of, of, of where, 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 where well, that, and that's the problem. You know what's worse? <laughs> the worse is you can't do managed care. You can't, you can't take, like we, we have individuals that have to volunteer for managed care, okay? Mm -hmm. They get Social Security money, and as soon as they get it, they spend it on foolishness and stuff, or they get it ripped off because they were in the street and homeless, so they get preyed on and stuff like that, so they don't pay their bills, so they stay on the street, okay? Now, if I have them in the program, they have to be, I, I got no control over that. 
I can't tell them what to do. They can take their dear money. I, I, I mean, you, you can't even, uh, 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 what were, when, you, when you become a, a person in control of their money, a conservative. Oh, conserve. You, you, thank you yes, very sir. much. Okay. God just talked. She's yeah. up there. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, a conservator, you, you go to the court and you're their conservator and say, look, they want their money. They want to spend it on candy, and, and I can't do it. And the, and the judge said, "Well, no, that's their money." Yeah. What do you mean it's their money? I'm their conservator. Why, why am I even their conservator? If you tell me I got to give them that money, I know what they're going to do with it. They're, they're going to spend it on drugs. They're going to do foolishness, and they're not going to pay their bills. That means they're not going to have a home. Yeah. No control. And, and all they say, and it drives me crazy, it's my civil right. Well, yeah. And now you know why there are so many that are involved with drugs that, that end up in the jail system quite frequently because people feel like, where else do you go when there's, when there's not enough of the programs? And un unfortunately, for, for a lot of the people that you deal with in mental health, you would like to think that they would recognize this themselves that they need help, but they don't. Yeah. And, and, well, and, they that's, and that's the difficulty. The problem is the administration <laughs> yeah. up there thinks they can make yeah. judgments on their own. You know it and I know yeah. it. They, want, they come into your place and they tell you, well, that, that's when they like clients. And <laughs> okay, when yeah. you have a person that can't make any judgments on their own condition, on their own health, and stuff like that. So you try to influence them on, and influence them. You can't tell them. Influence them to stay secure in where they are, and they're doing good, and everything else like that. All they got to do is say no, and you're done. Yeah. You, you know, I mean, no, I don't want to. Do? That's 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 half the battle. Of what I I deal with a lot of times is, is, is helping people find that motivation. Oh. To, 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 to drive, you know, to, to push further and, and to help themselves, and it's, it's difficult. I have one individual, God bless him, he's been on the TV show, 14, 14 years, serious problem, was a serious problem, did 16 years in prison, 50 fights, okay, uh, uh, come out, did kinds of foolishness and stuff in the street because, I mean, he didn't know what to do, developmentally disabled, Okay. He's been with me 14 years. No problem. He lived, and all, it's volunteer. Everything is volunteer with him. Uh, I'm his, I'm his, I'm his, he one of my, he's one of my conserved people. Does everything and stuff like that. Had, has worked and, you know, and developed his, they, they didn't have him on as he could have got uh, social security disability 20 years before and nobody dealt with his stuff or anything else so, and we did that and stuff like that and, and, and he's he's so good okay that you know sometimes you forget that he's developmentally disabled okay but you take away if I'm gone like for two days so he's got independent living skill trainer okay then he starts to deteriorate as long as I'm there or somebody so somebody's got to be there to see, with, with him, just he, talk he, to he him. stays yeah. on Go ahead. No, I was going to say you got my Oh, I got a call. Oh, you thank have you. One. I don't know if they still Hello, are. you're on Street <laughs> Talk with Father Russ and his guests. Hello. Sorry. Father Russ. Yeah. This is Hat. Hey, Hat. God bless you. How you doing, my friend? Very good. If anybody can tell you that Father Russ is telling the truth, it would be me. <laughs> because when Father Russ came in from Michigan, I'm the guy that actually set up his interview to grabbed the apartment, and we lived across from each other for three or four years. Wow. And, and here's another weird one. We have the same birthday. <laughs> yes, we September do. September 10th, 1943. <laughs> the same birthday. But I can tell you, Father Russ has done a tremendous amount of work in the city of New London, and I know quite a few of the people, clients, that Father Russ work with. And at first I thought, boy, Father Russ has control over everything that they do. And I said, geez, I don't know if that's right. But guess what? It is right because 
many of these people, they are unable to budget their money for anything. The money, and when he said the money would go for candy or stuff like that or for junk, he's absolutely right. Some of these people had ideas of, of buying a, getting a car and working at a, a place where there's just no, no way they could possibly do this. So unless Father Russ has complete control, these people have a tough time, and he gives them a great place. They have to adhere to his rules. He's very tough, but he's, but he's, but he's fair. He, you have to adhere to his rules, and it's simple. If, if, and we've already seen Father Russ knows a few people have come in, and they've gone. And guess what? They're back out on the street. You know what I mean? And they just, it's like me. I have a concrete head. I mean, you, you have to drill things in the mud yet sometimes, you know what I mean? But, but I just had to uh, tell you guys, of, and Father Russ has had some good dealings with some of the ministers and, and priests in, in the city that do a great thing for the homeless because there are too many homeless people in New London, and it's sad. And, and I know from talking to Father Russ that a lot of it happens because they might have a warrant or a warrant – you know, out on them, and they don't want to. They don't want to get involved in being inside. But Father Russ takes care of them. There are places, thank God, that that we can get these folks can get meals. And, and we need to be thankful for everything that we have. I know I am. But uh, Father Russ, you keep up the keep up the good work, and I'll we'll see you every now and then. And uh, uh, you take care of yourself, my friend. Thank you, Hat. I, I really thank you very, very much. I appreciate you uh, you saying that. Thank you well, very it's much. It's the truth. Yeah. Well, you you helped a lot of people, Hat, too. Okay. You're not you're not saying that. You were in the painting business. Uh, you helped a lot of my people uh, early on. You, you know, and uh, uh, with the, and a lot of you you know your friends and the people that we know gave clothing and everything. You know. Well, I appreciate that, Father. You take care of yourself, my oh, friend. Oh, thank, thank you very much. All right, buddy. Yeah. Love you guys. Okay. Love you, too. You take it easy. Bless Bye. you. Guys are really, really helping, and you probably know some of them uh, yourself personally that are in business in, in, in New London that help. Some, some would hire uh, uh, my people and stuff like that. Uh, Hat, Hat was a painter, a longtime uh, painter here, uh, and uh, uh, he's over in your area now it was uh, quick he's a Quaker Hill uh, uh, person uh, uh, and uh, uh, but it was in the painting business for years and years and uh, you know they used to do jobs when he was semi-retired he'd take out our folks and everything else and and give them work and he tried to teach them how to paint and everything so that they could have uh, a real a skill to to work on you know and, and what happened is he, he lived right before when I moved in Right beside me, and then I took two. I had, I had two. We had two. We had three, three apartments in a four apartment building that I had uh, managed care under my people and stuff like that. Where I am, I own. I have two. I have two now. Uh, when I was in, uh, when I was in New London, I had two, three, four, four oh. um, um, under managed care, and then we had the shelter and stuff like that. So, so. Uh, you, you, you know, and, and I, my philosophy is very different. I, I split with the uh, with the hospitality uh, center over philosophy. My philosophy is you work your way out of uh, that business. You know, it's, yeah. it wasn't my my business. Uh, uh, you know, you you put people. You, they have to be able to work themselves. They have to be responsible. That's key. You know, if you you, you, you know, and you can't play games. And I'm tough. As he said, you know they know. I, I don't fool around. You you get so many chances, and then then that's it. You you've got to be responsible, uh, okay. And and the problem is that we know, uh, me and Dom, Dominic know from work. Some of them don't don't know how to be responsible. No. It's not that they don't want to be responsible. Sure. They deserve, but they don't know how, and they can't. So some. You, you need managed care. I argue with judges about this and everything else. Like, oh, it's civil rights, civil rights. I'm a civil rights guy, but you can't allow that civil right to hurt them. They're hurting themselves. Sure. You, you, 
They got to be able to make the decision to make the decision. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. Sometimes they need help. To, they need and, help. And, and uh, okay, I don't see it. anything wrong with that. I, I mean, you know, if you got X amount of money, my thing was this: if you got X amount of money, whatever it is, their rents this, their foods this, and their gas expenses and that. There you go. You got to pay that. If the judge, they got to pay that. The government gives them that, right, judge? You got to pay your rent. Yeah, I got to pay my rent. You got to pay this. You got to pay. Okay. Let me pay that. Now, whatever you got left over, if they want to throw it out the window, fine. Sure. But I want those other things done first so they have a place, they have shelter, they have food, and everything. If they want to throw their... Gee, it sounds like you're talking about government over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sounded more Republican all the time. Are you doing all right? Are you... <laughs> That's why. <laughs> I was going to say the other, the other committee you're on, and I know it's it's a big thing in the news these days is, is the environmental committee. Oh yeah. Well, energy. I'm and, energy oh, energy, uh, energy, uh, and uh, energy. And, uh, yeah. I always get those two confused. Yeah. Yeah. A little well, there, bit. there's I mean, a lot of looks, similarities. Yeah. There's a lot of things that we deal together. Yeah, energy and uh, uh, public safety and uh, appropriations. So, so energy. I know. Um, I took part in Solarize. So I, I actually have my, 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 my roof is up and up and running and uh, how's it work? it's great actually. I'm yeah. I'm I, even in, in November with less light on, I still manage to produce more than I used in a month. So I actually have credits. I know I use them up during the winter because I have uh, And is there is is your dollar out of pocket worth what you're doing or did you have no out of pocket is, or which program worth? Uh, the the one I, I did and I have to tell you what a great program that, that, that they set up with this, uh, with, with the Solarize, you know, each, through each city. They had the, the solar lease program, no money down, 20-year lease, um, and, and, and I, I put this on my, like, Facebook page because I want other people to see how, like, solar really works. You know, for a 7.2 kilowatt system, I pay 87 bucks a month, which is fixed. Yeah. My rates are never going to change. And I pay seven seventeen dollars a month to to be hooked up to uh, the UI. So they, you know, my my electric meter runs, you know, in oh, one in one direction and and then the other. And you you have your credits. Um, I know I didn't start at the beginning of their year. I, I, mine got finished in September. Um, but you know, I per, my first month was even. My second month I produced credits. You know, I'm hoping it kind of goes <laughs> continues down that sure. way. Sure. But. One of the great things that they did was um, the state picked up some, some of this uh, to set up the leases. And they, I guess they were supposed to have enough money to go through 2016. And they, well, they, they, used, the they used all, the, it was so popular, they used all their money for it. And, and w what we have to do, and what we're struggling with on the committee is this next utility 2.0, really, if you will. The, the right. utility of the future and how are we going to manage it? Because if more and more people have more and more of these panels and they're sending more and more uh, uh, energy back to the grid, the utilities who supplied that grid and that infrastructure mm -hmm. on the grid, you know, they're, they're going to be out money, right? We can't be raising, you know, the fixed fees and can't be raising all yeah, that. Yeah. So there has to be a balance. Yeah, you know, exactly. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. There's, there's where the rub is going to be. Yeah, you know, uh -huh. you have shared solar now where if you'd, you know, your house is in under a big maple tree and you can't put you know, uh, solar panels on it, you can participate in a shared agreement and take get some of those benefits. So so there's got to be that give and take and that win-win. And, and uh, we've done a lot of work in the last year on that. Uh, uh, and I think it's going to be a big push in the next session, uh, you know, to help move that well, forward. I, I, I you you got to talk Angie into doing that. Well, the big problem, I think, that, they, that, that you face is wintertime because uh, you got twofold. You got a lot of these power plants which switched over to natural gas, and then we got a lot of uh, people that use natural gas. So when you can't supplant, you know, the amount that needs to go into the system and, you know, during those, so what, those what, winter years. What, what happens is that the, the first right of refusal for the gas, really, if you want to put it in a simple form, mm -hmm. is all the residents they and the businesses. They get their heat and mm -hmm. natural gas first. So the, electric generators have to turn to other means. They have to turn coal plants on and oil plants on, and that's where that spike in energy costs come from mid-January to mid-March, mm -hmm. and so we, we need to bring in more uh, natural gas for the generators during that time, which should drop down that peak, and we passed a, a legislation this year that allows the DEP to 
uh, put out to bid for a pipeline that will bring it in. Uh, now, the oil guys are a little upset about that, um, but I think a good prudent measure would be to build multi-fuel generation plants and have oil and gas on these electric generators because oil is under 40 bucks a barrel right now. Who exactly. knows what's going to happen if we start producing it? So. I, I, I see. Uh, Good? Well, yeah, I, too many, I can't believe the show is all over. You know <laughs> what I mean? I just get in there. I got another hour and a half of questions I want to yeah. ask you. We well, got well, to get to. Maybe I'll come back if you, well, if you ask me. Now that yeah. you're, you know, you're leaning Republican, I'm happy to come back all the time. Now, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you're talking about governorship. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get an early yeah, in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, right. Dominic, next week, who we got? Bruce Morris. Bruce Morris. I love Bruce. I miss Bruce a lot. One of my favorite guests. Uh, okay, yeah, chair of the, uh, the Black and Latino the Black Caucus. and Latino Caucus. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, okay, so that should be good. Uh, I love you people. Uh, I want to, and again, Paul, thank you for oh, thank being you. okay for standing up being thank here with you, us. Thank you very much and, for having uh, me on. Oh, really okay, well, and uh, he's going to be back. Don't, don't, don't worry. We, we're not going to let him go. He's my senator. You know, I ain't going to let him go no place. I will come uh, back anytime. Okay, and uh, I want to thank all you people out there. Please, as I always say, I need all your prayers. Please pray for me. I'll pray for you. But you know how much, how many prayers I need. God bless. See you next week. Bruce Morris.